Well, actually, I first came to Langley in 1965, and I came as a civil servant. My background in college is physics. I was a physics major. And I was assigned to the Space Mechanics Division under Hewitt Phillips, and I worked on the rendezvous docking simulator. And this is a very important simulator. In fact, I believe it might be the only surviving simulator from that era intact. And it is now, I understand, uh, an historical monument. It's in building 1244, which is our large hangar. My office was there as well. And for those of you who don't know much about the rendezvous and docking, this was key to, to this mission. They had to practice. They couldn't practice there. They had to practice here. And they practiced here in building 1244 uh, with this simulator uh, that we had. And it's still there. It's on the, the ceiling. Uh, it's, it's suspended by cables and gimbals. It has six degrees of freedom, X, Y, Z, uh, roll pitch, yaw. And the astronauts would come here and, and fly this simulator and practice the docking. They're right on the ceiling of, of the hangar. Uh, so this was very exciting for a young person. And I was a young person. I mean, I, w I was fresh out of college, uh, you know, at, at this point. And I, I was hired as an aerospace engineer, even though I was a physics major. And I was, my office was in the building, and, and this, our lab was the hangar floor and the hangar ceiling with this docking simulator. And so it was exciting uh, for a young person to, to witness this, to, to see the astronauts come and train to do this rendezvous docking maneuver. And the, and the maneuver was between uh, the lunar excursion module that went down to moon and then came back up to lunar orbit and then had to dock with the command and service module that had been orbiting all along, uh, you know, around around Moon. And so, I mean, there they were, all alone up there in, you know, that orbit around Moon. And this is a very critical maneuver. But will they practice this and practice this? I was doing uh, my work 65 to 69. Uh, there were some changes from, from the movie. Uh, uh, we no longer had a segregation problem. That, that problem we had solved. Everything was fully integrated. Uh, so, so we didn't have that problem. Uh, and also, men and women were more together as, as well. In fact, the, the branch that I was in which again was in the space mechanics division. The branch had two rooms for our office space. These were two large rooms, and they were separated by a door in between. It was really an, an archway in between. And everybody in the entire branch happened to be in those two rooms. No walls, no partitions. Everyone was in there. The secretary was in there. The computers were in there. We still had computers. Uh, I mean, that's a bona fide job description, people who compute. Um, the engineers were in there. The technicians were in there. We even had a mechanic who was in there. We had students. We had a psychologist because we were working with human subjects. And we were all in there, but we were all in there together, regardless of grade, regardless of color, regardless of gender, without partitions around us. And you haven't asked me this, but, but it's a good question. Katherine Johnson was in this branch. She was in this branch. And um, she was middle-aged at this point and in her prime. Uh, I didn't have much interaction with her because I was young and just starting out. 
and I was doing experimental work down on the hangar floor, uh, whereas she was doing her calculations uh, there at her desk. She was um, obviously hardworking and competent and, and well-respected, but she was very humble and very quiet. And she worked away quietly at her desk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody just worked. I mean, we, we, we worked hard. She, you know, was obviously more experienced than I was because she had gotten a head start. But she definitely was a humble person, but very well respected all, always. And as I say, she was one of the, the, the computers who was put into a, you know, research branch uh, to work more independently. Whereas there were some back in pools that were loaned out um, to various branches. Our branch needed a full-time person because of, of the work, you know, that we were doing. Uh, with, with this simulator. There definitely are more women here than there used to be. Uh, now, there really were women here back in those days, um, but they typically were not engineers. Uh, they typically uh, were computers, like Katherine Johnson, but, but I mean, the, the computers were mathematicians. They were professional uh, people. Uh, we had a lot of secretaries in those days because the secretaries did all of the typing. I mean, nowadays, we scientists and engineers, we do our own typing because we have our own desktop computers and, and Microsoft Office, and, and we can do these things ourselves. Uh, back in this branch that I was in, as I say, it was a large branch. Uh, there was one secretary. She typed everything for everyone. There was one typewriter, and it was a typewriter. It was an IBM typewriter, a manual typewriter. Well, I guess maybe it was electric by then, but you still had to type uh, on a typewriter um, with, with no memory capability or, or anything like that. And, and if you made a mistake, it was hard to correct. Um, but the secretaries, I mean, that to me was the hardest job uh, because they, their workload was, was tremendous. They typed all the memorandums. They typed all of the publications. They, we had no answering machines for our phone messages. The secretary answered the phone, and, and she wrote the messages down on little slips of yellow paper and, and walked over and put it on somebody's desks. You know, they were out. They were down in the lab. And you'd come back, and you'd find this little yellow telephone memo that somebody had called. And, and so the secretaries, I mean, they were civil servants, but there was one secretary in every branch. There had to be. There should have been more, I, <laughs> I, I mean, really. But these were, these were women, typically. So there were women here who were secretaries. If you counted up the actual number of women here, there were uh, a, a fairly sizable number of women. They just weren't, uh, there were not as many in the engineering and science uh, roles, but they were mainly, you know, secretaries, uh, mathematicians, computers, librarians. Uh, I guess we had some in procurement or, or human resources, which was called personnel uh, division. They were, they were mainly in support functions. And, and they were all, again, uh, once again, civil servants. The, the biggest thing, though, is not the number of women, but the number of women in engineering, science, management roles. That's definitely different. And um, there, and I think the culture maybe has changed because of that. For me, I, I guess it was probably different for different people. Uh, for me, it was a great beginning. I mean, I, I was young. I was fresh out of college. Uh, what a way to start a career, you know, a, a tremendous success. Uh, fairly early on, which did a lot to establish this agency, you know, for the future.